welcome back. My name is Tom, I'm the Dusty Builder, and welcome to my laundry room. I'm going to be doing several videos of little projects I have going on in here to make this space more usable. Um, the first project we're going to work on is gaining a little bit more space in here by pushing the dryer back closer to the wall. And there's two different ways to do this. Uh, the first way is with a recessed dryer box. We're going to talk about the proper way to install this. Uh, the way that my house didn't allow for the use of one of these safely anyway and then we're going to talk about another solution which is one of these uh, slim fit periscoping um, contraptions uh, we'll talk about these uh, the safe way to use these and um, you know I prefer not to have the local fire department come and, and put out a fire dryer fires account for over 15,000 fires annually so um, stick around, this will be informative, you won't want to miss it. So for these recessed dryer boxes, it has to be bigger than a 2 by 4 wall. I thought since I had, I have an inch of foam on the outside of my house, I thought I might be able to somewhat, you know, make a channel in here and then have room uh, for a 90. Um, it didn't work, it was a bad idea. Now I have uh, some drywall to patch up. And then we're gonna use this. This is our, gonna be our solution. Okay, so we're outside in the uh, the Dusty Builder High Performance Building Lab, and we got a mock-up of what this would look like on a two by six wall. Um, we just secure this to the studs. We have a spot here for the drywall. And my plan was just to have, um, was just to vent directly to the exterior. And then so with this plywood mimicking my exterior sheathing, we're actually in good shape here. We got enough room for the uh, for the dryer exhaust vent, and we've been beat in really good shape. Um, however, um, if you read the back of the instructions here, I don't know if you can see that here, but to get your fire rating, they want you to put a piece of drywall in the stud cavity. So basically, they would want drywall here. And then you would have your exterior sheathing and there wouldn't be a whole lot of room in there for insulation uh, that was interesting to learn so if i did have a two by six wall i would have done this but since my wall was just two by four i chose to go the other route okay now that we've determined that this recessed dryer box won't work for my wall assembly again a two by four wall is just not enough room for the the duct work so that leaves me with this option this is a slim fit hookup also, it's referred to as a periscoping dryer vent, and you can buy these anywhere, Home Depot, Amazon, Lowe's. And the big question with these though, is this up to code? Is this okay to use? So ideally, in a perfect world, all the ductwork would be round, smooth metal. Now, since we've determined we're trying to save space, a lot of people will try to use this flexible, rigid um, dryer ducts, and the ridges have the propensity to collect lint, which could lead to dryer fires. It's not round, but it is metal and it is smooth. So I feel like this option installed properly is better than the flexible ductwork that you just smash behind your dryer, never clean out, and you're never thinking about it again. So this is the option I'm going with. If you have a different opinion or if you're a, a pro, if you're an HVAC guy and have a different opinion, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. I wanted to make sure that this vent was airtight, so I sealed everything up with some um, ducting tape. And the way we install the vent, the crimped section goes to the inside of that exterior duct. That's just four inch ductwork. And then the bottom piece is gonna accept the, the vent for the dryer. Then just a quick coat of primer for my drywall pennants. So the bottom connection gets secured with a clamp. And we're doing the same for the top connection. I did use a piece of uh, foil tape to make that connection airtight and then I secured it with the clamp. Okay, so after all this, how'd we do? So this is how we would have had to install it um, without the reduced clearance and it was about seven inches. And that was a, a 90, I would have had a straight pipe and then another 90 to the back of the dryer. So again, about seven inches. So with our reduced clearance, 
we were at about four and a half inches. So all that we saved about two and a half inches, which if you're trying to just save a little bit of space so the dryer's not blocking a door, I'd say it's worthwhile. 